Hello TurboGrafx users. This is the first video in a series of two videos that's going to explore some of the more advanced uses of TurboGrafx. We are going to be taking a Photoshop document and we're going to be grafting it onto this green cube here that's just been smoothed out a bit. Here's our Photoshop document. It's just a uh, uh, you know, face of a crazy looking guy here. He's made up of a set of ears, eyes, pupils, a nose, and a mouth. The fastest way to import this guy into Maya is to use the bundled Photoshop script that comes with Turbo Graphics. So if you haven't already installed that, make sure you install that before uh, following this video. Alright, under scripts, select export visible layers to Turbo Graphics ML. Find a suitable location and name your uh, mail script and save it. I name mine Smiley. Okay. And all, once we have that done, all we need to do to get uh, our crazy looking guy here into Maya is we'll go ahead and source that mail script we generated. And that'll go ahead and load our layers right in. Okay, once we have our layers loaded in, we're going to have to set the pivot points like we normally would. So most of these pivot points are going to be auto set and they're going to be um, centered in each of the images, which is fine for most of them. However, the, the mohawk and the ears should have pivot points uh, a little in better places, like the bottom for the mohawk, is, that's the bottom center point, so you can pivot there. Ears should be near the, near the head where they're going to connect. Um, so those are good pivot points, and it uh, doesn't really matter, but we'll just move, go ahead and move the nose down a little bit, just in case. So most of these other pivot points are just fine. We don't really need to mess with the rest of them. Okay, now that our pivots are good, let's go ahead and shift our tessellation. Let's give it a pretty nice, fine tessellation here so, we're, uh, so our lighting this definitely ends up being good. Okay. Let's fine tune the tessellation, make sure it ends up near the center of our objects. Okay. Once we have everything set up, let's go ahead and export this face as a Photoshop object. Let's go ahead and give it a name, call it Smiley, same name as the PSD. And we'll go ahead and bring him into Maya. Okay, once he's in Maya, you'll notice he's sitting right there next to the cube, which is fine. If we go ahead and open the outliner, you'll see all the different components all grouped together. Now, one of the first things we want to do is we want to group some of these layers together so they're easier to manipulate. A good thing we can do right away is grab these two pupils and parent them to the eyeballs. That way the eyeballs contain the two pupils, if that makes sense. Another thing we can do is grab the nose and the mouth and parent them to the eyeballs. That way uh, it's going to be easier to move the face around because all we have to do is move the eyeballs. So let's go ahead and move the face in the position. Let's go ahead and position it on the front of this cube here because uh, this is going to be the cube's face. It's most important to move the eyeballs because that's what everything else is linked to. We can always adjust uh, the nose and the mouth later to, if we uh, for better fit, but let's go ahead and make sure the eyeballs are where we want them to be. Okay, once everything's uh, pretty much flush against the surface of the cube here, we're going to want to uh, test this out. So just to uh, test what would happen if we rebuilt this, let's go ahead and rebuild it and see if everything stays put. Uh, you'll notice everything did not stay put. And there's a reason for this. TurboGrafx tries to uh, keep everything uh, in relation to each other in a 2D space. Now, this behavior works well because you can update objects in the GUI and they'll end up looking the same in 3D. But the way to we this uh, behavior is actually undesirable for uh, grafting objects onto 3D. So you notice these two attributes uh, allow rebuild and update translation. 
What we want to do is we want to turn off that update translation attribute. Now what that's going to do is now I'm going to rebuild it and because the translation uh, up, the update translation attribute is off, you'll notice that the eyes do not get updated. And because the nose and the mouth and the, and the pupils are attached to the eyes, they also will not be readjusted, even though uh, their update translation attributes are on. This is because they're parented to the eyes. Now we we'll want to do the same thing with the ears and the mohawks. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and go to their transforms, go to their extra attributes, and make sure to turn off update translation. All right, let's go ahead and move those ears and adjust them into position. Okay. Now keep in mind that these ears. Uh, we can update these guys freely because we turned off that update translation attribute. So anytime you don't want a Turbo Graphics object to move around when you update it, just remember turn off that update translation attribute. Okay, we're gonna move that mohawk into position. Okay, so now we have all our objects uh, in the proper location in relation to the cube. So. Um, this is uh, how we can take a Turbo Graphics object and we can move it into the right space. Now you notice the objects are not properly attached to the cube. Now in the second video I'm going to show you how to properly graph these objects on the cube so they still update.